They ain't down, they just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. They ain't down, they just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. What up, everybody? My name's Nigel Ryan Jones, and yes, yes, what you're reading on the title right now is absolutely true. I have become the elite level in skateboarding and have been named a professional skateboarder. This is amazing, this is exciting. So, there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot that's happened, there's a lot that's been going on. I have been named pro by a company called Snake Farm Skate Co. You might have seen me over the uh, past while, a couple months, a while now, rocking a lot of Snake Farm stuff. So there's probably a lot of questions, and we'll get into that. But before we get into that, we gotta take a trip down memory lane to see how your boy Nigel Jones got to this point. Oh, should I show the boards first? Should I drop the boards? All right, we'll show the boards right now. I still haven't opened this box, so I'm like nervous. This has been a long time coming. Without further ado, let me show you guys the new Snake Farm Nigel Jones Pro Model. If I can get this box open. There we go, that's why, got it, sick. Ah, this is so amazing! <sighs> Introducing. Oh my God, it's so much cooler in person. I saw a picture of it. I didn't want to see a picture of it. I wanted to open it and like get the whole real deal Holyfield, but they said the picture doesn't do any justice. And so far from what I saw, it doesn't do justice. All right, so we got the 8.0 full size shape here. And oh my God, this is gangster. What? The Nigel Jones Snake Farm Poseidon Pro model. That might be Afro Jones right there. I don't know yet. Homie got the fro, he got the Glock, he's after the octopus. This is amazing. This is absolutely incredible. Holy shit. Dude, this is sick. This is so sick. What? It does look like Afro Jones. And see, I'm telling you, Afro Jones strapped up in the ocean. I don't know what we're gonna call this board. Oh man. Dude, this is awesome. This is an honor. Shout out to Snake Farm. Shout out to Cody McIntyre, shout out to Chad Hall, shout out to everybody that's running everything over at Snake Farm. This is great, this is a long time coming. I'm so stoked for these boards, I'm so stoked to be working with this company. A veteran owned company that is also skater owned. That's one thing that like, it pushed me to skate for them is that whole aspect, which I haven't, I mean, I've had the opportunity to skate with veteran companies, though to be a part of one that I feel like is doing so much good for the community is amazing. So here's the board, Nigel Jones Snake Farm Pro Model. Hopefully there's a link below, you can grab one. Appreciate the support. I'm sure there's gonna be questions, comments, concerns. There's gonna be so much emotion and uh, all that. So, I mean, leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. Show your support, show your hate, show your love. At the end of the day, I'm gonna always love all y'all. But for now, let's start to get into how we got to this point. Let's rewind back to September 2nd, 1992 at 1234, a legend was born. I don't, nobody knew he was a legend yet, but I mean, he would grow into something crazy and that would be your boy, Nigel Jones. I, I mean, y'all call me the legend sometimes, so I'm just gonna take this time to own it for once in my life. Anyways, your boy, born in Oakland, California, at around the age of six years old was when I was around my first skateboard. We had one guy on the block, his name was Sean. He was our next door neighbor. I think he, he was, had to be at least like 11 or 12. I remember he was that one kid on the block that was like the super jackass type. He would put a firework in, a, in an orange and light it and try and throw it and it would pop and blow up in his ear. And he's actually the person that gave me my first skateboard. It was a Kareem Campbell City Star, OG board. I didn't do much at the time. I was a young little jit. So I did like the, bo uh, the butt board and around. I would do the, the knee board and be on the knee. We had a hill right next to the house. So we would like go down the hill on the skateboard. 
But yeah, that was the first board that I remember having and I used it as much as I could from what I remember when I was little, but I never thought anything of it. Now we're jumping over to 2001. My mom got us out the ghetto, wasn't no hood baby no more. We moved over to the suburbs, town called Tracy, California. We were in the middle of nowhere. It was Cowtown at the time. Tracy's kind of big now. It's a, a nice little city. When we drove in, the first time we went to go see our first house around the corner, I saw some kids skateboarding and I was like, Y'all about to be my friends. And guess what happened? They became my friends. And before you know it, that's when the love for skateboarding kicked off. I didn't want to do nothing but do skateboarding. I was outside every day, all day, running up and down the blocks, terrorizing the neighborhood with the boys. Shout out to Michael, Brandon, Tyler, Spencer, all the boys on the block. So I think from the age 10 or 11 or so, on is when I started to really like pick up a skateboard and start to like really get into it. And uh, still never thought anything about it uh, or, or of it. Just a, another fun activity to do outside of the house. When I was younger, I never thought of going pro or any of that. But then again, I was that kid that was diving into everything. So not only was I doing skateboarding, we would do BMX. So we would have days where we go to BMX. We had a, a spot called the Tar Pids in Tracy where they had jumps and everything. We would go out there. My main focus was the skate aspect and it, took off. I started to uh, learn with the guys that I was skating with and I started to integrate myself with the skate community in Tracy, which produced so many awesome people uh, that I learned from. It was an awesome time. Like the whole, the whole growing up skate period was just beautiful. I want to say the first like two or three years of skateboarding was just obviously that big progression phase, which me and the, the group that I was skating with started to progress pretty rapidly. Um, we were all like starting to learn new tricks. We were starting to throw our new tricks down bigger objects. We were starting to skate new objects, uh, be out in the streets more. Um, and then it got to a point where as one of those typical skate rats, we would go to our local skate shop all the time. It started out as Board Authority Skate Shop. Everybody in town would, you know, go to those skate shops. And then eventually uh, the homie Jeremy Morgan took over Board Authority and named it Street Science. And when Street Science came around, that kind of changed a lot for a lot of the youth in our community because Jeremy was one of those guys that really pushed us to go to all these different contests and like start uh, introducing us to uh, shop reps. I don't know if they still have shop reps, but back in the day, we used to get sponsors through shop reps and then your shop rep would start getting you into more like the district reps and then eventually you would make your way onto being on the team. So there's a lot of companies that Jeremy helped me out throughout the years with hooking me up with boards. Like I got skated for D, uh, New York for a little bit. I would be getting New York boards, DGK boards, shoes like Globe, like a bunch of other stuff. But as all this was going on, he also was pushing us, like I said, into that, that contest aspect. And the biggest contest growing up around the, the time that I started skating was the Central Valley Am Jam, which was um, ran and operated by a skater's parents, skater known as Ducky Kovacs. Shout out Ducky. That's the homie. Uh, his parents ran Cali Am Jam for a long, long time. And that was one of the best contest series that the Northern, not Northern California had. And it gave you a lot of exposure. So that was one thing that I started getting into as I started progressing. It's starting to get into these um, Cali Am Jam contests, doing the castle contests. Kind of, that's when I think I started to spark that super interest in getting sponsors and like, starting to get my name really out there. Street Science actually was my absolute first sponsor. Jeremy threw me on the team when I was, I wanna say 15 years old. We would be doing videos, so like, there's a bunch of Street Science Skates YouTube videos of us like skating Double Rock and skating Sacramento and like all these, these missions where we went as a team together. It was uh, awesome, super cool. I woke up one day after being a flow for a couple teams, um, I think one thing that really influenced this decision was my best friend, Ryan Gliso. His dad was a special forces guy. He was in the team for years. So he would talk somewhat a little bit about his job, but it always intrigued me. And I think that was one thing that kind of one day I, I was just like woke up and I was like, I'm going to join the army. <laughs> and I did. And I don't know why it was good. It was bad, but it was bad, but it was good. But I'm so glad for the experience that I had. That is something I would never change. That is an experience that is like nothing else I've ever experienced in, in life. I've never had a deeper connection with a brotherhood ever. I love my bro boys, but I mean, it's different. <laughs> While I was in the military, um, 
at first, obviously going through basic training and all that whatnot, there was no time to do any skateboarding. So I was like, oh man, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my career. It was at a time that I feel like I was at a peak to where everything was going good. I was getting all this exposure. I was getting all these sponsors, all this coverage. It was super cool. We were out traveling all the time, meeting all these new people. I was out skating with everybody that you can think of. I, I have skated with so many people growing up, which is crazy now that in the position that I am, I feel like most of those people don't realize that I was around them for a lot of the time. Like back to the bird contest, skating with, all the all the homies there and meeting so many people all the all the thrasher contest the buster bill contest was one of, that was the first big stair set that i've ever skated while i was in the military it was hard to find time to skateboard but i did find time teaching rock soldiers how to skateboard take one okay right foot left foot in korea there was there was time uh, i think i'm probably one of the few people that ever has skated on the DMZ, because that's where I was stationed, was uh, Camp, Camp Boniface, Pam Mujam. Shout out all the guys up there in front of them all. There was one spot that I could skate, which was a helipad, and it was Hotel 127. And it was the biggest strip of concrete that I could skate, and I utilized it as much as I could. Another cool thing that I got to do is while I was stationed in Korea, a lot of the Koreans had never, like especially up on the DMZ area, it's a very secure area, so they don't, when you're stationed up there, you you're, you you have to focus. It's a it's a high stress area, and it's like it's a lot. You're on the border of North and South Korea. It was cool seeing some of the guys, like the Korean rock soldiers, watch me skateboard, and then it was even cooler to have some of them interact with the skateboarding. Which I had one of the guys from uh, Rock Special Forces that uh, sat and watched me skate for an hour and then came and started asking me questions and I got him onto a skateboard. Literally the first time he was ever on a skateboard, I gave him the pointers of how to get on, gave him the little tips, got two pushes in, hopped on there, started riding, and dude, like the joy in his, his voice when he was like, yeah, was like nothing I've ever like experienced at that time. And it was so cool, so humbling. After that, I got stationed in Fort Drum at, in New York, which was the coldest place in the entire world, and I will gladly never go back. But there I got to do a lot more skating. There's a skate park in Watertown, which is the town that's close by to Fort Drum, that I went to as much as I could, got to skate with the community out there. So that translated into me skating down to Syracuse, because that was the closest major city to our base. The biggest thing was skating down or driving down to Syracuse and meeting the skate community in Syracuse. Uh, but I started filming with them. It was super sick because then I felt like I was back in the skate community. We were out street skating. They were taking me to all their local spots. Uh, it was super cool. I got pretty dope footage for as much that I could skate. So fast forward 2015, I'm out of the military, fresh out. I took a two week break off of work uh, from the military. Started immediately working at Tesla. And Tesla is located in Fremont. And as you know, the real guys would often skate at the Fremont Skate Park. So the Fremont Skate Park became my local skate park. Uh, I would skate there as much as I could after work. And after I got out of the army, I had so much more freedom. So I started honing in on skating. I was getting back all my tricks. I was like hammering down on everything, really trying to go hard. Um, and that's when I met the real guys. And Lance loved me. He thought I was like super good, super cool. So we exchanged numbers, and then from there on out, it was just go, go, go. Super awesome. Like, the way that it happened was just so organic and cool. I wouldn't change that for anything. It was awesome. It was a good experience. I had never been on camera like that to where I'm, like, talking, and I was very shy for the first, like, I want to say the first couple months, maybe the first year or so. But I'm so thankful that I got to run into the Braille guys. I got to, to have the opportunity to skate with such an awesome entity that it's brought me to the point where I, it's, where I am now. Like I can talk on camera comfortably. I can, I can express things I would never express before. Um, I can showcase my abilities to you guys, which I've been doing over the years, which has been so awesome being a part of this. We have brought so many people into skateboarding. We have done so much for the skate community, I feel like. So it's been a very positive thing for my life and it's been a very active sport that I've enjoyed. And now I'm in a, the, the point to where, at a level to where I'm teaching kids that are on an Olympic level. One of my students is an Olympic, an Olympic qualifier. It's, it's, it's nuts. So I'm really thankful for how, how 
everything transitioned with Braille and over the years of all, all the all the everything that we've done. The persistences over the years, the, the countless like laughs, the, the tears, the traveling, the memories. There's been so much, the pain. There's been everything. Every single emotion has gone through skating with these guys and it's been absolutely incredible. And it's given me the platform um, to really show who I am as a person and, and kind of give you guys an insight to my life, which has been really cool. I've gotten to bond with a lot of people over the years. Um, I've gotten to I'll let you guys into my life, which I've gotten positive feedback and response for, for a long time. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely been super, super awesome. And I, I greatly appreciate everything. And with that being said, that's kind of how we got to where we are here with Snake Farm. So let's do a little time loop. There I was on my DMs and I get a DM from somebody that's like, hey man, you should do videos with Donut Operator. That guy's super awesome. And I was like, I don't know who that is. So I did my research. Turns out Donut Operator is somebody that I super enjoy. He does shooting breakdowns, he does police stuff, he skateboards, he has a skate shop. So we started talking and that's when I started to really see the community that he had out in Texas with him and Batty and Brandon Herrera and Matt Carricker with Demolition Ranch and all of those guys. And it was, some, it was a part of a, a community that as somebody getting out of the military and jumping straight into just the skate homies, I didn't have that side still. So to be able to, to connect with somebody that was on both ends with the skateboarding and the, the, I guess you could say tactical shooting side or whatever. It was super awesome to, to find that there was a community like that or an individual that was in a community that I can connect with. Started talking to Donut. We ended up uh, setting up a date to where I flew out to, no, I drove out to Texas and I spent a week out there, did videos with Donut, did videos with uh, Matt Carricker over at Demolition Ranch, which you might have seen. We did How Many Skateboards Could Stop a Bullet. Um, and that opened a lot of doors for me, especially with the, the side that I kind of was catering towards. Because at this time, like on my social medias, I was doing a lot of skateboard stuff and I was doing a lot of shooting stuff. And a lot of people were like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I haven't found somebody that enjoys both of these worlds. And these are two worlds that I've never put together. So I kind of was that niche to, that, that was that outlet for a lot of people. And it was cool to, for people to see me go from our platform at Braille over to Demolition Ranch was a huge platform and just like the collaboration that was not like expected and people were so stoked on it. That opened the door to Evan Hafer, who is the one of the owners to Black Rifle Coffee, who reached out to me and he was like, uh, hey man, you're a veteran, you own a skate company, we'd like to feature you in our Coffee or Die magazine. And I was, I was absolutely, I was like, yes, I would love to do that. So we ended up doing that interview and I explained um, me owning STS, which that's a whole new breakdown. STS is still alive in an entity. I am just not the, the owner of it. I have somebody else running and operating and owning everything. I am not getting anything from that because of the opportunity that I had with Snake Farm. I wanted to take that because I felt like I wouldn't have an opportunity like this while running my own business. As a business owner, I never wanted to label myself as a pro skater. So to be able to work with a company and actually earn that is sick. So Evan Hafer, I do that. I do the interview with them for the Coffee or Die magazine and that comes out and it's awesome. Um, shortly after that, JT from Black Rifle Coffee uh, as well reached out to me and he was like, hey man, like I have a skate project. I think it'd be really cool if we get you on board. What do you think about this? And I was like, yeah, this sounds like an awesome idea. And he gave me a breakdown. Right before all that went on, it was the, the first time I met Cody McIntyre, which like I said, is a part of Snake Farm. I did a STS Blue Tomato tour in Los Angeles and he came out with his lady and the whole Blue Tomato team. And we kind of took him around LA to all the spots. We did a whole big edit and we, uh, uh, SCS was sponsoring Blue Tomato and the Best Before Contest. So that's how I got linked up with Cody McIntyre. Fast forward back to the trip to Texas as uh, JT was like, oh, let's do this. And I was like, hey man, do you mind if I bring somebody on board that I think would suit like everything that we got going on for this project? And he was like, absolutely. So I reached out to Cody McIntyre and Cody was like, absolutely. This sounds like a cool opportunity. I got them linked up and then we all figured out a date. Met up at JT's house in Texas. So, so sick. Dude, his property is amazing. He's such a humble guy. Uh, everything over there was so sick. I got the surprise of my life. The, 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 the first day we got there, chilling, he's like nonchalant, like, oh yeah, my buddy Travis is coming. I was like, Travis who? 
And he was like, Pastrana. And I was like, there's no way Pastrana's coming right now. Fast forward to the, the evening of that day, the CEO of Snake Farm, Chad Hall, was actually there, which is my first time meeting him and his first time, I believe, meeting Cody. And we had all our meetings and talks and everything was hit off well. At the end of the night, crazy story, but I was there taking shots with Travis Fashana, JT, Cody McIntyre, Chad, K uh, Kayla Francis, who's a big uh, TikToker. Dude, it was unreal. But I like to think that I got the ball rolling with getting stuff with Cody onto Snake Farm. Could be, I mean, that could be false, but I'm almost positive. Uh, I got them talking and that kind of started pushing the ball forward with Snake Farm and they like made a solid direction of where the company was going. And then uh, fast forward to where we are now. <laughs> Uh, we've been we've been in the talks with me being on the team and, and skating for them for a long time. And unfortunately for a while, I've been injured. I don't know if you guys noticed in the past couple months that uh, doing some YouTube videos, I've been kind of sluggish and slow. It's because I've had a couple of injuries that I haven't really tended to, and that's my fault. And then recently out street skating, I re-injured my ankle. I'm gonna be out for a little bit longer. That's the one thing that I feel like is unfortunate with this announcement is that all my street footage right now is on a standstill. We are doing like a little announcement with what I have. But uh, once I'm back 100%, I'm gonna be back out in the streets to, to put out a, a good part for everybody to watch and super uh, show you guys and showcase my abilities and my talents and hopefully inspire somebody out there to get out there and do what they love, you know? So yeah. That's kind of like the quick rundown of how everything is going and how everything is and how everything's been. And I'm stoked how everything's going. I'm stoked to be a part of Snake Farm. I'm stoked for this journey. Um, I'm stoked to be able to hopefully inspire some of you guys to get out there and chase your dreams because this has been a dream of mine. I don't know what else to say other than I got to put this board together and get to going because this is great. I hope that kind of gave the rundown on everything. Uh, as far as this point goes, like I said, this has been a dream come true. I'm so stoked. This board came out absolutely perfect. I can't, I can't, I'm, <laughs> I couldn't be happier, dude. Like, this is awesome. Shout out Snake Farm. Shout out Chad. Shout out Cody. Shout out to all my supporters. Shout out to all the haters. Shout out to everybody. Anybody that's on, in this sport, anybody that has love for skateboarding, whether you like, love, love it, hate it, whether you like this decision, don't like it. It doesn't matter. If you're in this, I love you. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate everything. Definitely drop a comment below, show your support. We will have these available. I believe on the Braille website, there will be a limited supply if I'm correct. If not, there should be a link down below to the Snake Farm website. So you guys can go pick up one of these Nigel Jones Pro Model Snake Farm skateboards. I think, honestly, yo, hey, should I call Afro Jones to come look at this? Should we call him? All right, let me make a phone call because I feel like Afro would really like to see this, what, this board. He might be on it. You see it? You peep it? Boy, come here. Let me get my dog's reaction. Peep the whole thing. Look at the whole everything. Finally happened. Finally happened. Anyways, let me go ahead and make a phone call to Afro Jones so he can come see this board real quick. And then we'll, we'll finish this video off. I done heard there was a special something for me out here. What is it? What is it? Oh my God. They got the boy on the skateboard. You see me? They got the boy on the skateboard. You see, this about time they did it. It's about time. I deserve everything in the world. Let me get out of here. Thank you guys for watching this video. I super, super, super appreciate all the support over the years, all the love, all the hate, everything. You guys are the best. If you wanna show your support, head on over, grab one of these boards. I would greatly appreciate it. You guys are absolute best, and I am so stoked to kinda of show you guys what I can do in the streets. Let's get it going, baby! Like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Some videos to my left. See you in the next video. Woo!